Hello and welcome to my rankings of all the Halloween films. This is a video I've been putting off for quite some time. I've done plenty of other Halloween rankings videos to do with the kills and characters and stuff like that, but never done the films before. It's one I've been putting off, um, but this week I just woke up and thought, yeah, I'm going to do it this week. So here it is. Um, I do have some unpopular opinions, I think, in my list. When I was putting it together, I thought, oh God, the internet's not going to like that, but it's just my opinion. Don't beat me up for it. The world would be a boring place if we all had the same list. So let's get into it. And I've got controversial opinions straight away at number 11. There'll be quite a few folk who don't like this. Halloween H2O, number 11, bottom of the pile. I've seen this film many times over many, many years. I find it really bland. Um, funnily enough, I've, I'm doing my review for this later this week. I've just reached Curse of Michael Myers was the last film I reviewed, and so my next one is H2O. So I'll save my big laundry list of reasons as to why I don't like this for that video. Um, but for now, let me just say, yeah, I just I just can't get into it. Every single time I do a Halloween marathon and I get to this one, I don't really enjoy it that much. Um, but yeah, if you want to know more, check out that review video when I put it up. But for now, I'll just leave it alone. But Halloween H2O, for me, is the worst Halloween movie, and you won't find many people who say that admittedly. Right, coming at number 10, we have Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers. This is a, an opinion which is more in line with everybody else. I, I always see this film sort of down the bottom of people's lists. It was a rushed film. Um, a lot of the returning characters are just brought back in a really irritating way. They've made Loomis really mean and annoying. Jamie is just annoying in this film for the most part. Mika as well. Some of the new characters like Samantha and Mikey are quite good. Um, and I do like the whole sequence of the barn. That's probably what just puts this one above H2O. And I don't even mind Tina, actually. I know some people don't, but I think she's all right. But on the whole, I think it just, it feels like a film that was just churned out quickly to make a book. They could have done with another year on it, maybe, and just touched it up a bit more. And maybe could have done with just not ignoring the events of Halloween 4 for a start, but let's not go into it. Right, the good news is, after this point, all the other films are films that I really enjoy. It's just these bottom two that just irk me a little bit. Uh, but 9 out of 11 is pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. So let's see what is at number 9. It's Halloween 3 Season of the Witch, a film that I stupidly ignored for like 20 odd years. Um, I started watching Halloween films when I was 13. I didn't get around to watching this till I was about 35. And then I discovered it was quite good and felt totally ashamed for ignoring it for all those years. So if you yourself have not watched this because it's not got Michael in it, just take a chance, just sacrifice 90 minutes of your life and you might be surprised because it is a very good film, completely unlike any other Halloween film. It's completely unlike any other horror film I've ever seen, really, really unique and different story. And you know what? Once Halloween Ends has come out, I wouldn't mind at all if they went back and did a few more films like this just to give us a break from Myers. I'm not sure jumping straight into another reboot would be the best thing, but I, I don't know. Um, I could be I could be alone in that opinion as well, for all I know. Right, coming in at number eight, we have Halloween Resurrection. This is probably the highest you'll ever see this film ever on anybody's list. Um, I'm a bit of an oddball when it comes to this film because I really like it. Um, I just, it entertains me. It entertains the hell out of me. I like all the characters. Yeah, the Kung Fu kick is annoying, granted. Um, Laurie's death could have been handled better. I don't like the fact that she she basically has him there to kill him and then stupidly tries to take the mask off. It's just a daft mistake. You just would not make after her experience that she's had with this guy. Terrible writing. Um, and there's one or two many F-bombs at the end involving Freddy. They could have toned that down a little bit. But all the stuff in the house I really like. I think there's some good creepy scenes. And yeah, I just have a grin on my face watching this film. If this had been the sequel to the original, it would have been too jarring. And I'd be like, what the hell? But... Because it's the eighth film in a series, it, it feels like it's in its right place. You know, it, it feels a logical film to follow on from H2O. And yeah, call me a fan. Call me a fan. Right, coming in at number seven, we have The Reboot. Now, this is a film I don't feel I've had proper time to digest yet. I know it's been a couple of years, but I've only seen it twice, I think. Um, but my opinion of this could yet go up or down, depending on what... Uh, kills and ends alike you know if those two films turn out to be absolutely amazing 
then I might look back on this one and think, oh, that was quite a, it was an okay but a lacklustre start to the trilogy. That, that's what happened with um, my experience with the Christopher Nolan Batman films. Because when Batman Begins came out, I thought, wow, that was like a really unique experience. One of the best superhero films I've ever seen. And then when Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises came out, they were so much better that I can hardly go back and watch Batman Begins. Now, if I'm going to watch those films, I tend to just forget that and just go straight to two and three. So what will happen with Halloween 2018? I don't know. If, if Kills and Ends turn out to be really, really underwhelming, I'm sure they won't, but if they are, I could look back at 2018 and think, wow, what a film we had there and we did, just didn't realise it. Up a few spots on the list, you go. So I don't know. For now, it's number seven, but I suspect most people have got it higher than this. Coming in at number six, we have Halloween 2. This is a film that's improved with me in recent years. I think I used to have it like lower, like maybe eight or nine. Um, I love the hospital setting. It's It's got a good creepy atmosphere, some good chases, uh, some good kills. And I like the fact that it follows on from part one. I've never watched both films back to back and I'm determined that the next time I'm doing a Halloween marathon, I'm going to watch one and two on the same night. I'm going to clear enough time to do it and because I've never done it and it, I'm surprised that I haven't actually. Um, the only thing I don't like about this film, which keeps it down in six, is just the characters are underwritten the, the, the runtime could have done with another 10 15 minutes just to flesh a few people out um, and there's no protagonist at all Laurie's not very good in this film so yeah the characters is what lets it down but as a good atmospheric slasher it really works and I do like it coming in at number five we have Halloween for the return of Michael Myers this was the first Halloween film I ever saw in full the one that you know cemented me as a fan really i'd only previously seen that the last 20 minutes of the original uh for a while this was my favorite halloween film of all time it was also my favorite film of anything for a short while when i was a teenager not so anymore but i still really respect it it's a, a really good entry in the series definitely a strong sequel um i don't think you'll you'll find many people putting this down near the bottom it's got a great twist at the end the mask is a bit crap but we can overlook that Great characters as well, Jamie and Rachel, brilliant. In next, at number four, Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers. I first saw this when I my dad rented it for me on my 16th birthday, and I've been a massive fan of it ever since. Um, at the time I saw it, it had only just come out in the UK, like 96, something like that. Um, it's only the theatrical cut that I've seen. And like I said in my review, I've never had any interest in seeing the producer's cut. Maybe one day if they shove it in with the, the theatrical as part of some Blu-ray package or something, I'll watch it. But I've never had any interest in going out and seeking it because it just sounds naff. All that stuff with the magic rocks. And I've seen one or two clips on YouTube. I just don't think I'd enjoy it at all. But the theatrical version, I absolutely love. I, I think there's some great material in this film. Some parts of the story don't make set, sense, but if you just judge it on the atmosphere and the chases and the excitement and even the characters, it's a really, really strong sequel. I'm, I'm absolutely shocked that critics just tore into this the way they did because I think it's really good right coming in at number three and once again I feel like I'm back into the realm of unpopular opinions because I know a lot of people knock Rob Zombie's Halloween films I'm not one of them I think they're great I love them I when I first saw them I was kind of indifferent to them I, I, I enjoyed them to a point but I didn't think I'd seen anything special and then I left it a few years actually and then went back and watched them again and I was like wow these are amazing they're just, I mean they're so brutal and in your face and the way that they're filmed is just so I don't mind the fact that we get to see Myers as a kid and all that stuff I know people have a big problem with that but I can just compartmentalize it as its own separate sort of duology that's completely different from all the other films so I can just treat it as that and not let that bother me and I really enjoy watching these films I pretty much watch these two every year now uh, Rob Zombie's Halloween 1 and 2 there was a time when I just went years without seen any of them after the first time I'd seen them but um and I can I find it really hard as well to separate one and two uh, utterly impossible that for a, a time I was thinking that two would be my favorite but when it came to doing this list ultimately the chips fell this way and Halloween 2 is just below the the first one but I think it's a great film really good sequel and ignore all that stuff with the white horse Jesus it doesn't make any difference to the film whatsoever the only thing I don't like is there's this terrific chase sequence at the start in this hospital that turns out to have been a dream and I just wish that had not been a dream and it had just been a continuation of the first film and then Myers had disappeared after the hospital bit it, it just weakens it a bit for me that that's a dream but it's it's only a small thing but I, yeah I love the films these two films uh, so that brings me actually to 
Rob Zombie's Halloween 1, which is my second favourite Halloween film overall. Yeah, I just think it's a great film from start to finish. I've seen it many times now. I just love the way it's filmed, the music, and it's just a good story. It, it does copy the first film a little bit, sure, but I don't know. It, it's I think, just think it's a nice, different interpretation and something different. And, you know, it, it doesn't affect my enjoyment of the other films. But even Rob Zombie can't change what is my all-time favourite Halloween film. I'm glad that at least my number one pick is conventional. It should make some people happy. Um, no, I, this is film is one of my favourite uh, films of all time. Possibly my favourite film ever of any genre. Possibly. It's, it's, it's going to be either one or two or three. Um, I'm going to do a top 100 horror films soon and a top 100 films of any genre and this is a contender for winning it i saw this at the cinema um a few weeks ago because because covid's ongoing at the moment there's no proper films to show in cinema so they're showing loads of old things and when i saw that this was being shown at my local cinema i was oh my god i'm gonna quickly book that so i did and i went to see it and i was surprised when i was watching it that so many people in the cinema were having a laugh with it rather than watching it serious i've always watched it serious so to see people laughing every time Myers came on screen, because that's what they were doing. Um, there was a scene where Myers sticks his head around the side of the bush when Laurie's walking home with her friends. Everybody thought that was hilarious. And I, I suddenly thought, wow, that is actually quite funny if you're watching it with other people. So for the rest of the film, every time Myers stuck his head out in the background, people were laughing and I started laughing. And it was just a really different way to watch the film. It was kind of bizarre. And this scene as well... And, um, it, it flicks between Linda and Myers about three or four times. And every time it went back to Myers in that ghost thing, everybody was just pissing themselves laughing. It was I'd never expected to one day watch this film and laugh like I did with this movie. I've always thought of it as a really serious film. So even after all these years, the movie still finds new ways to surprise me. But yeah, ever get the chance to see this in cinemas, take it because it's, it's, it's a unique experience, definitely. But that is it for today. Um, some very weird opinions in there, maybe, but that is my list. It's my honest list. Those are the films as I enjoy them in the order that I that I would put them if I were to rank them. So there we go. Um, I'll see you next time, I guess. Bye bye for now.